Ask me present. Yes, present. Claudia Ochoa, present. Armin Garza, present. Nereida Cantu, present. Thank you, Ochoa, present. Dr. Sainz, I do declare a quorum. Thank you, uh, Ms. Ochoa, and hello, everyone. Welcome to our meeting. We're glad you, everyone is joining us today. If we could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Do we have any public comments? We don't have public comments. Okay. We'll move on to approval of minutes. Can I entertain a motion to approve minutes of 2020 proposed tax rate September 9, 2020? I'll we'll move. I'll also move. I'll also move on both items one and two. Second. Okay, I have a motion. I have a second. There's no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 So opposed? Motion passes. We'll move on to superintendent's report. Thank you, Ms. Ochoa. The first item on the superintendent's report is the enrollment report as of September 15, 2020. On that day, we had 12,102 elementary students, 14,438 secondary students, for a total of 26,540 students, and that number is a decrease of 97 students from this time last year. The next item on the superintendent's report is the discussion on the district's transition plan for on-campus instruction. This is the plan that was presented last night. It is the plan that has the, two, uh, the three phases. Phase one being um, school reopening on October the 5th, only for students that live in areas where there is no infrastructure for internet access, in which the district has identified 1,463 students. Currently, our principals are making contact with those parents to offer on-campus instruction. So it is the same presentation that you saw yesterday at the work session. I put it on this uh, item to see if there are any additional questions. There is an item in our agenda to approve this plan. So I wanted to make, to open it up for discussion or questions before uh, the board votes on it later on in the agenda. If there's no questions or comments, then that concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you. We'll move on to discussion items. Discussion of La Jolla ISD acronyms plan. Uh, Ms. Magda Villarreal, our assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction is going to present the La Jolla ISD asynchronous plan. This is the plan that our teachers are currently using for online instruction. It does have to be approved by TEA we have to submit it by October the 1st. Uh, funding for ADA purposes depends on the state's approval of this plan. It does need board approval. Uh, so uh, Ms. Villarreal will show us the plan and then there is a voting item for this plan also later in the agenda. Thank you, Ms. Villarreal. Thank you, Dr. Sainz. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. <clears throat> Can you see the document? Not yet, Marta. Not yet? There you go. So you're able to see the screen now, correct? Yes. Okay, very good, thank you all. So basically the Texas Education Agency requires for all districts to submit a plan that depicts 
what we're going to go ahead and be doing for, with virtual instruction. There are four components that we need to go ahead and address, which are the instructional schedules, material designs, student progress, and how we're going to implement all those different components throughout uh, virtual instruction. And um, this plan basically needs to be uh, reviewed and approved by our board and then we need to go ahead and submit it to TEA and TEA will have it reviewed by two reviewers who are educators and basically they will rate our plan. If, uh, if our plan receives a 75% a or better, then basically it's approved. If we get anything below a 75%, then basically it's disapproved, it's returned, and um, then with recommendations, and they give us a time frame to go ahead and make those improvements on the plan and resubmit. Um, this plan is important because in order for us to receive uh, funding for attendance purposes, we need to make sure that our plant is approved and it addresses those four components I mentioned. Um, this plan is also in your binder that was given to you all. I believe it's on page 17 or 16, it starts on page 16. Um, but I do wanna address you all to page three of the plan because that's where exactly where we're gonna start. I'm not gonna read everything in the plan. I'm just gonna go ahead and just review the different um, items that we've included in our plan that I think that's going to give us the points that we need and that we'll go ahead and we'll make, I'm sure that we'll go ahead and get approved by TEA. Okay, so the first component is the instructional schedules. And as you can see on the side on page three, there's a question, there are open-ended questions that we needed to answer. And the first question reads, what are the expectations for daily student interaction with academic content? So one of the things that we decided to include there was that, what is our platform? Basically, our students are gonna be interacting with our G Suite platform as the learning management system that we're utilizing as a district. Also, that our students are gonna go ahead and be working 180 minutes online, and our secondary students are gonna be working 240 minutes um, online as well, okay? So those were some, some things that we wanted to point out, as well as the fact that we were gonna be doing both synchronous and asynchronous instruction. That way they could see that uh, it's a combination of both. So our teachers are gonna be guiding our kids um, a delivering instruction and the students are going to be able to do the independent practice in itself. I do want to go ahead and um, draw your attention to where it reads where it says text and ELPS and we thought that that was important to add there as well because it reads students will receive on grade level instruction with the appropriate academic support for the four different domains which is your reading, speaking, listening, and writing. Okay. And also that we were gonna go ahead and utilize the lesson designs and the lessons that were developed by um, our, not necessarily our coordinators, but our guides by the, the, that were developed by our coordinators and then the lessons that are being developed by our teachers. And that's how we're gonna go ahead and be engaging our students, okay? Questions about that particular open-ended question. And there's more that you could go ahead and read um, but I'm not going to go ahead and read everything from there. The next question is, how will you engage all student groups and grade levels um, that will, so they can have the opportunity to engage in the whole academic content every single day? Again, one of the things that I want to uh, address right there is, if you look at uh, where it says expectations for interactions and engagement, we went ahead and listed certain things that uh, our teachers and students are gonna be doing. So for example, the teachers will monitor and track that at attendance through those live lessons that are being done, right? Um, and, and that's important because in order for us to be able to get our kids to be, uh, to understand the, the lesson or the skill, we need to make sure that we're interacting with our kids on a daily basis, right? Also the fact that we're recording and posting lessons uh, for our kids to be able to refer back to them 
in order for them to uh, be able to understand in case they have any questions. Also, the completions of assignments, right, through uh, the asynchronous and how they're able to upload them. And you could go ahead and continue and see how we're also including uh, the videos that we've developed for our parents as well. And then the last statement there reads how lesson plans will demonstrate the use of instructional resources that we have available for all, not only necessarily for the teachers, but also the resources that, were be, that are being developed or that we're utilizing for our students as well, okay? Uh, also, I wanna draw your attention to the different apps that are being utilized in the classroom that we went ahead and included. For example, the What's Up, Remind, Class Dojo, uh, Google Meet, Seesaw, the, you know, Paradeg, Jamboard, and we could go on and on, okay? The next question are, it reads, what are the expectations for teacher and student interaction? And it's also listed there, and you could see how we're saying that we're meeting with our kids intermittently, not necessarily, you know, um, from the morning all the way till noon. It's done intermittently because uh, of what research is saying and what research states that that is not conducive for our kids. Also, uh, basically, it talks about how our high school kids that go to SDC, are, they're using a different platform. And that's important to note there, because if we don't, then more likely they would flag us, because they know that uh, our kids attending, or kids attending uh, the university use a different platform. So we did note that there. Also, we noted the fact that we're having small group instruction, because that's how you're also differentiating for our kids, okay? Those are just different things that I wanted to note there. The next question reads, um, it goes back to the differentiation as well. And basically here, we just wanted, we just added the fact that there's the IEPs, the IAPs that we, that we are um, following. But what's important here is that we went ahead and we added a link. So that way TEA could actually see exactly what we're offering uh, our students and they're able to see versus us just writing it, they're able to see exactly what we're providing our students um, and how we're differentiating for our kids. So that's a live link that they're able to see, okay? And also what we did is we went ahead and, and broke it up by the different, uh, obviously, teachers that we have. We have special ed teachers, we have resource teachers, we have inclusion teachers, we have GT teachers, dyslexia teachers, so we went ahead and added exactly what they are, uh, the expectation it, that we have for them and what they're expected to do. Okay. Questions about the first component. That one is a, a big one because obviously it's talking about the, you know, the instruction in itself. The next one is just the material designs. And I just want to let you all know that Basically, it's looking at the instructional materials, how we're progress monitoring, how it, whether they're tech aligned and so forth. And what we did is we broke it up by the different grade levels and you're able to see how it was elementary, then middle school, and then high school. And uh, obviously, I'm not gonna go through it because I mean, I'm sure that you were able to look at it, but what you could see there is, is that if you look at the elementary, you're able to look, you're, you're able to find every single resource that we're utilizing and how it's being utilized and how it's aligned to the actual text, okay? Questions about the instruction, about the materials? If not, then we're gonna go ahead and proceed. And we're going to go ahead and proceed to, I'll tell you what page right now, to actually, it's page 15. And on, on page 15, now we're going to go ahead and, and talk about student progress. How are we going to be progress, uh, progress monitoring our students, right? And the first question there is, what is the expectation for daily student engagement? So uh, for, our, for a district like ours, what is it that we expect our kids to be doing, right? And um, the first thing that we added there basically is again, how we expect them to be logged in for an amount of time for 
synchronous and asynchronous and the amount of time that we expect them to be in, you know, working independently as well. So that way it could equal out to the 400 and something minutes that we have for the instructional day. Okay, that's the first thing that we pointed out there. Um, the last sentence there also reads how examples of asynchronous uh, assignments are also recorded and presented. That way in case students are in need of assistance. So we added that there as well. And um, also how read aloud each sessions are also available for our kids and that way they could follow along as well in case they have any questions and so forth, okay? If you turn the page, um, another question is, what is the system for tracking daily student engagement? And here basically, it, they're, they're talking about the attendance regulations and what is it that, um, are we following what TA, TA has put in place for us? And that's exactly what we put here. Um, basically, we're following the three different criteria when it comes to attendance and also for academic purposes, right? We have, we're following the fact that we have a, a learning management system and, um, and then we're checking to see whether they logged in and if they did, then we, we make sure that we check for attendance, that's one, and for academic purposes. The second one is evidence of curricular progress by the teacher and daily interaction. So that's another way for checking for attendance and also for checking that the kids were, are being successful when it comes to their academics. And the last one is just the completion of and submission of assignments during the window that has been given by TEA, okay? And one of the things that we also added here, because we gotta make sure that we answer the question in itself is, what else are we doing to, aside from that? We went ahead and added the fact that we, the kids are also submitting assignment, uh, they're submitting grades on a weekly basis and then we're marking them and then also that we are pulling out kids during small group instruction, um, during homeroom and advisory time to be able to meet their needs. Because if they're lagging behind, we gotta make sure that we're closing those gaps. And um, that was also important to put there because like the commissioner has said, our kids, we know that they're behind. We know that they're lagging behind. So what are we doing about that? So that was something that we, we went ahead and put there. And also the fact that uh, we're using our LMS system to go ahead and track that as well. If you go to page 17, there's another question there. And as you can see on that one, it's talking about student engagement, whether it's consistent with the progress that would occur on campus. If the kids would be on campus, is it consistent now that, it's, that they're doing instruction virtually, right? So that's what they wanted. They want us to answer there. So what we put there is basically that are the instructions that the kids are receiving, they, it is TIC aligned, right? We do have, we, we're following the curriculum. Our kids are being receiving initial teach. They're being guided through the instruction and then they do their independent practice. And we went ahead and explained how that is being done, okay? And then we also explained the fact that there are POC meetings that are occurring at, um, at the campus level, even though the teachers are you know, working from home and everything is being done you know, through, um, through, through virtual, everything, everything like that is still occurring. We have everything in place and we explain how POCs are still occurring at each of the campuses. So we went ahead and explained that as well. Then we talked about uh, the last question, what is the system for tracking students' academic progress? And this is actually one of our strengths. And what we've added here is a link that will go directly to our uh, collaborative assessment protocol. So that's basically what we've added here. And we also talked about how we progress monitor our students based on how our kids are doing when it comes to our BOI assessments, our MOI assessments, we also went ahead and talked about our SLOs, our student learning objectives. So we included that here as well. And then the last one is for this particular component, what is the system for provide, providing regular feedback to all students? And here we talked about the different apps that we have and our learning management system as well, okay? 
We have one more component that we want to talk about, which is the staff development. It, it's actually, um, it's the professional development. And what we did basically for this one in particular is we went ahead and put all the staff development that we've done for our teachers and, and what we're going to continue to do in a calendar. Okay, we have a link and uh, you're able to click on that link and you're able to see it from the summer all the way to May and how, we, how we've already structured the support for our teachers in order to ensure that this plan, you know, goes how it's supposed to occur and how we're going to be able to support our staff in order for our kids to be successful. So this, I do want to say that this, this plan in itself um, was developed in conjunction with our executive directors. We also had our CNI staff that went ahead and rated our plan. Uh, we also had our directors that were able to rate the plan. Um, so uh, as, as they were rating the plan, they were giving us feedback and then we were you know, improving this particular plan in itself. I do want to let you know that TEA does uh, need a plan from every district by October 1st so they can have enough time to review and give us feedback. Okay. I probably talked too fast, right? Or talked too much. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any questions? But uh, again, there are links there for live documents, and I think that that in itself is going to help our plan overall. Okay, there's no any questions. Um, under consent agenda, I have been requested to take out under bids. Uh, so I do need a, do I need a motion on that? It can be removed without a motion, Madam President. Okay, so we'll be taking out uh, out of consent agenda bids. So with that, we will not have anything under consent agenda because that was the only item. So we'll move on to contracts. Can I entertain a motion for ratification of the CARES Act interlocal cooperation agreement between the County of Hidalgo, Texas and La Jolla ISD approval to entertain a motion. Second. I have a motion and I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> motion passes. Approval of contract between Hidalgo County Election Administrator Ivan Ramon on behalf of Hidalgo County and La Jolla ISD for general school board election to be held on November 3rd, 2020. Can I entertain mm -hmm. it? I have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Number three. Approval of resolution number 2020-09 certifying the tax roll for the 2020-2021 school year setting the tax rate of a minimum of 1.3110 per 100 valuation with 1.0683 for maintenance and operations and 0.2427 for interest and sinking for La Jolla Independent School District, making certain findings and providing for a severability clause. Can I entertain a motion? President, I'd like to make a motion to approve items three, four, five, and six under tabs under contracts. I'll second. I have a motion. I have a second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Motion passes. Did you include number six, Mr. Garza? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Under bids, approval of learning management system K through 12, CSP under 20, 2021. Can I entertain a motion? We're gonna remove that one, Mr. Shaw. 
Yeah. It, yes. Yeah, it's been removed from consent agenda. Now it's just a regular agenda item. Oh, okay. I saw move. Uh, I have a question on that. Yeah, uh, let me, saw... Mr. Hernandez, can you second so we can start the discussion? I'll second that. You, okay, thank you. you. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Uh, Ms. Zapata, I thought I had seen you that you were with us. Is she in or? Yes, or... yes. good afternoon. Okay. Um, I'm seeing that there was another. Um, bid that was lower than them, why didn't we go with them? Can, they offered a lot more. Yeah. Can I respond to that, please, Ms. Hernandez? Uh, Blackboard is the uh, learning management system that is used by South Texas College. And so our students that have dual enrollment courses, we need to match the learning management system. Otherwise, our kids are not able to do their online courses. Uh, so that is the reason why we have to go with Blackboard, even though I do see that there are some others, but we do have to match the South Texas College system. Even though they don't offer everything that the other companies offered? Yes, because Blackboard is the one that the professors at South Texas College use. And so in order for our kids to participate in the courses, to take the courses, our district has to purchase and give our kids a learning management system that is the one that South Texas College uses. Okay, thank you. So that's correct, Ms. Hernandez. It needs to match, so it has to be Blackboard, yeah. And that was part thank of you. the awarding factors that were taken into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have, we have a motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. We'll move on to business and finance. Ratification of submission of application for the 2020-2021 coronavirus relief fund, CRF, bulk purchase local match reimbursement program. Second. Second. I'll a motion, we have a second, all in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> motion passes. Approval of proposal for the construction of Juarez Lincoln High School press box through TIPS contract 170801. Can I entertain a motion? That's a move. I have a motion, I have a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, approval of application of contractor's payment request number two for La Jolla ISD, Dr. Javier Science Middle School HVAC renovations project to entertain a motion. Also move. Second. Last second. There's no discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passed. Approval of application of contractor's payment request number 16, OEA ISD job order contract with Performance Service Inc. Elementary school track and school security gates. Can I entertain a motion? I also move. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. There's no discussion. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Approval of application of contractor's payment number 18 for La Jolla ISD phase two of the PSI guaranteed energy savings performance contract amendment project. Can I entertain a motion? <clears throat> also move. I'll second. There's already a motion. Do you have a motion? A second. Me? I'll second. No, you motion. I need okay. I, I thought somebody had done done Who's the motion. I need a second. Second. I have a motion. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. 
Amended order of general election number two for La Jolla ISD school board to be held on November 3rd, 2020. Can I entertain a motion? So moved. I'll second. I have a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Suppose motion passes. Approval of Texas Association of the School Board Online Learning Center courses for school board members to attain through webinars. Can I entertain a motion? I'll move. Second. Yeah. Motion, I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Appointment of official delegate to the Texas Association of School Board. Can I entertain a motion? I'll also move. Okay. A motion in a second. Are we appointing someone or are we just not uh, appointing anyone? I make a motion to appoint our president, Esperanza Ochoa. I'll second that. Okay. Accept the nomination, Mr. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? <clears throat> Motion passes for the extra work, but I will represent well. Under instruction and student services, approval of La Jolla ISD on campus instruction transition plan. Can I entertain a motion? Second. I have a motion, I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. We don't have anything under HR. We will go into executive session at 12.33 under executive code Texas Government Code 551-071-072 and 074. We're out of executive session at 2.07 p.m. Uh, Madam President, I'd like to make a motion under letter H, personnel items 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 as discussed in executive session. I have a motion. Can I have a second? Second. I have a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. It is 2.07. This meeting is adjourned.